Well, it turns out I was wrong again. <laughs> but at last, the Transalp has made a return. Everyone is absolutely thrilled. Well, not exactly everyone. Yes, Mr. Grumpy returns. The original 1980s XL600V has matured. Now we have an XL750 and the specs do look pretty encouraging. The Alp gets a surprisingly generous 90 ponies. Wasn't expecting that. A 21 inch front, 18 rear. There's about 200 millimeters of ground clearance. The seat height is 850 and there is an 820 option. The upside down forks do give decent rebound. At 208 kilograms wet, it's on a par with the Touareg and T7. But for me, that's where the good news ends. Okay, okay, I know. <laughs> the Transalp always played second fiddle to the bigger Africa twin. And it seems like that hasn't changed. Sure, it will be fun. A bit of touring, weekend escapes, and some light gravel. So it's back but it's back in a kind of NCCB kind of way. I'm not loving the way it looks. And the clocks are a little bit Ford Focus for me. One 12 volt charger, nowhere to put your phone. And where is the GPX mounting bar? Oh, and if you want a bash plate, you'll need a cough up for the rally pack. It's a shame we've lost that signature exhaust. And what the hell is this? That low slung can will not see many river crossings. Personally for me, I was hoping for something more like this. Another stunning design by the rubber dust team. Something a little more aggressive to challenge the T7. But clearly the big H are defending their 1100cc adventure bike. The last thing the Africa Twin needs is a fitter, more capable sibling. I am surprised they brought the name back at all for all the reasons which I mentioned in this video. There's a link. Sure, it'll be well built, reliable and easy to live with. But if you guys are anything like me, I was hoping for a sub 200 kilogram adventure hungry bike. Not another middle of the road adventure tourer, like we don't have many of them to choose from. If you like your riding modes and technology, you'll be pleased to hear the throttle is by wire, which will no doubt lend itself to cruise control at some point. There's Bluetooth stuff in there, plus phone connectivity, but sadly no tubeless rims, which I think is a big mistake. And there's no mention of a DCT option. Part of me is disappointed, but part of me knows it will be a great bike. And it's rumored to be around 9,000 pounds or 10,500 euros, so it is priced really well in this market. But even with its faults, I can't help thinking the T7 is just a bit more adventure focused. And let's face it, it is absolutely drop dead gorgeous. Mind, in the flesh, the Transalp could be a different story. We'll have to wait and see. But I don't know what it is. Perhaps it's the looks. Th there's something going on which I just, I'm just not buying. I'm just not that excited. I just can't put my finger on it. Perhaps it's just a bit too, well, perhaps it's just a bit too Honda. <laughs>